Hey there, Louis Aquelis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add a news web part to a SharePoint online site. Now, before I get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest SharePoint online tutorials. Also, be sure to check me out on Twitter and Instagram to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my new content. Last but not least, if you're interested in learning more about the tools that I use to produce these videos, check out the links in the description below. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, to add a SharePoint Online news web part to a site, you want to navigate to the specific page that you want to add the news web part to. In this example, I'm going to be adding it to the homepage of my human resources team site. Next, you want to go ahead and click on the edit button. This is going to allow you to actually edit the page. And then you want to select where you actually want to add that web part. Now you can move these around and rearrange them. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it at the top of my page. And you'll notice as soon as you hover slightly above or below the web parts that are on the page, you're going to see this red plus sign. You want to go ahead and click on that. That's going to bring up the menu that you can select the various web parts. Now you can search for news or scroll down and look for it. I'm just going to search for news and then I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And you can see here that this is going to add the default news web part right to the page. All right, now that we've added the news web part to the page, what you'll notice when you actually click into the web part is you have some options here on the left hand side. Now the first option is the edit web part button. We'll look at this in a minute. Uh, the next option is the move web part. And so clicking on this will actually allow you to drag and drop and reposition your web part on the page. You can also duplicate a web part by clicking on this button or you can delete it altogether by clicking on the delete icon. Now, you also have the option to rename this news web part. And so I'm just going to go ahead and call this team news. And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to actually click on the edit web part button. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring up a menu on the right hand side of the page where you can actually come in and configure some of these settings for this particular news web part. Now, the first option here is the actual news source. Now, what this is referring to is where should this web part look for news posts? Now, what actually happens when you create a post in a news web part is the actual post gets saved in the pages library of the site that that web part exists on. Uh, and to demonstrate this, you wanna go ahead and click on the settings button and you wanna come into your site contents and I'll just open this in a new tab. And essentially every time a post is created, it's going to get added into the site pages library. And you can see right now that I don't have any news posts, so there's nothing displayed here. Now I will just go ahead and close the site settings. And so when you're selecting your news source, if you select this site, essentially what that is telling this app is only crawl this particular site that this web part has been added to, to find news posts. If you wanted to click on select sites, this will actually allow you to select other sites that you have access to. Uh, and if those sites have a news web part, it will also add or pull the posts from those respective news web parts and display them in this web part that you just added. The last option is recommended for current user. And essentially what this does is this is going to look at the particular user who's visiting a page and it's going to crawl some of the metadata associated with that user and display relevant posts from other news web parts that have been added on other sites that that particular user has access to. All right, so now I've gone into my news web part and I've created a bunch of posts as you can see here. And the next setting that you can change in this web part is the layout. And the first option here is the show title and commands button. So by default, this is turned on. And essentially what this does is if you turn it off, this add button and the actual title for the web part is going to disappear. 
So you can see that I've toggled it off and those two elements have disappeared. Now I'll just leave it on for the purposes of this demo. And the next setting that you can change is the actual display style of your news web part. So by default, it is set to top story where it's going to feature a story and then it is just going to show a series of the other posts that exist on this web part uh, slightly off center to the top story. Now, if you were to select list, it's going to change the view into a list format. And you see, I just have to scroll down to see all of those posts. Uh, side by side is just going to reduce the footprint for each post and then display them side by side. And you have some other options like Hub News, uh, Carousel, where you actually have to toggle between the posts to see what content has been added um, and tiles, which again is just a different view. So I suggest when you're configuring your web part, you want to test each of these layouts and then select the one that's most conducive to your site. Now, another quick note, you'll notice as I select different views, um, I also have the option to set the number of news posts to show. Okay, so right now I only have four posts created, so that's why it's defaulting. If I wanted to increase this, I could just go ahead and do that. And that's, again, going to set the maximum number of posts that are displayed right on the screen of this web part um, at any time. And to see posts beyond the number that you select here, you actually have to click into the web part uh, to view them. Now the next settings pertain to the actual view style again. So show compact view. If you click this and turn it on, you're going to see that the actual thumbnails disappear. So I'll just leave that off. Uh, show number of views. This is going to display how many times a particular post has been viewed. Show author. This is just going to show the actual individual. And you can see here that the elements are changing in real time and show first publish date. This is going to show when that post was actually published. Now, the last setting here with respect to the layout is this option that says hide this web part if there's nothing to show. So checking this means it's actually just going to remove the news web part from your page altogether if no posts have been created. All right, the next setting that you can configure in the news web part is the filter. And essentially what this does is this allows you to apply a filter on what types of posts are actually displayed in the web part. So you can see here by clicking on the filter dropdown, you have several different options, including filter by uh, the title, including some specific keywords, recently added, recently changed, created by, etc. Now, if you wanted to filter by keywords, you want to go ahead and select that in the dropdown, and then you want to go ahead and type in your term. So if I go ahead and type in Teams, for example, uh, we can see that the web part reduced the list of posts that are displayed to only show those that feature that search term in the title. Now I will just clear this out and leave this blank for now. Now the next setting is enable audience targeting. And essentially what this does is this allows you to actually tag posts in the news web part uh, and assign different Office 365 groups or even SharePoint online permission groups, okay? So that is used to perhaps flag specific content that might be relevant to specific users or user groups. Now, when you want to enable this, you want to click on, and if you wanted to actually assign audiences to different content, you wanna go ahead and click on the settings icon and you wanna click on site contents, and I'll just open this in a new tab. And from the site contents menu, you wanna click on site pages. And recall earlier, I mentioned that every post is created as a site page. Uh, and what you'll see here is the audience column has been added to this library. Now, if I wanted to assign a particular audience to a post, what you want to do is you want to hover over that post or select it. In this case, I'm just going to hover over it and click on the three dots. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on the three dots, the more actions button again, and click on properties. And this is now going to bring up the metadata in the form view. And you can see here this audience field and I can actually go ahead and either select individuals or I can even select 
uh, Office 365 groups. So if I just look for members of my human resources team, I can select that here and click save. And this is going to recommend this content that I've tagged for that specific group. And you can assign multiple audience groups or users here. So another handy feature to help you sort of curate content and tailor it to specific audiences. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and click back into my site and I'm just going to close the site contents. Now the last thing that we'll look at is the organize settings. And essentially what this does is this allows you to rearrange the layout of your news post. So you want to go ahead and click on select news to organize. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up this menu. Uh, and essentially if you want to set your order, you can grab the news post and you can actually drag it over into the news order and rearrange these posts this way. Now, once you've actually dropped them into the news order pane, you can move them up and down just by dragging and dropping above or below a particular news post. Now I'll just go ahead and leave that as is and then I will click on the X and you're going to notice that the order in which these posts were displayed has been updated to reflect the order that we set here. Now that's it. This was just a quick tutorial showing you how to add a news web part to a SharePoint online site. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like it and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest SharePoint online tutorials. I'm Louis Yacobalos. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.